A navigation bar is one of the most important parts of a website. With most people using their smartphones to browse the web, it's crucial for you as a web developer to create navigation bars that work well on all devices. A responsive design makes it easier for users to explore the website and ensures a better overall experience. In today's video, we're diving into an exciting project, building a fully responsive navigation bar using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Whether you're just starting out or a seasoned web developer looking for a quick refresher, this tutorial has got you covered. If that sounds good to you, let's dive into the code. Let's set up our project. Create a new folder to keep everything organized. Let's name it Navigation Bar. Drag and drop the folder into your code editor. Now let's create an index.html file. Inside this file, we'll start by setting up the basic structure of an HTML document. Here's how it should look. Now open the project with Live Server. You can change the title. Then create a div element that will serve as the main section of your project with the class name of main. Within this div, include a nav element to house the navigation bar. The navigation bar should contain an H1 element for the Melody code logo, which can be replaced with a logo image or SVG. Depending on your preference, you can customize it. Next, add an unordered element below the H1 with five list items, each containing an anchor tag for the navigation links. For now, you can use placeholder text for the links and leave the href attributes empty. These can later be updated with the URLs of the respective HTML pages you want to link to. Create four more list items. Now change the element names to home, services, about, feedback, login. Now that we've structured our HTML elements, it's time to add some styling. First, create a new file named style.css and ensure that it's linked to the head section of your index.html file. In your CSS, begin by resetting the default margin and padding applied by the browser and set box sizing to border box to ensure more predictable layout behavior. Additionally, choose a font family that fits your design. Next, for the dot main section div, set the width to 100% and the height to 100VH to cover the full viewport. Position it as relative to prepare for any absolute positioning. Lastly, we'll add a background video in MP4 format to enhance the design, making it visually engaging. Add a video element above the nav inside the main div. This video element should include the following attributes for proper functionality. Loop, autoplay, muted, and place in line. These attributes ensure that the video plays seamlessly and without interruptions. Within the video element, include a source element with the SARC and type attributes to specify the video file and format. Uh, if you need an mp4 file, you can download download it from my GitHub repository, link provided below. Um, on the repository page, navigate to the images folder, locate the galaxy.mp4 file, click on it, and then select the download option. After downloading, drag and drop it into your project, or you can use any mp4 file that you want. Now back to VS Code. We have our mp4 file in the images folder. Set the SARC attribute of the source element to the video file's path and specify its type as video slash mp4. Once you've done this, save the file and proceed to style the video for proper display. Assign the video a class name such as backvid and style it in your CSS. Set its position to absolute with right zero and bottom zero to ensure it's anchored to the bottom right corner. Additionally, set the Z index to night is one to ensure the video appears behind all other elements on the page. 
While the positioning is now correct, the video size may not be optimized for all screen sizes. To address this, use the aspect ratio property to maintain the video's proportions, ensuring it scales perfectly across different devices. This will allow the video to display seamlessly at full size while maintaining its visual integrity on all screen sizes. Let's say min aspect ratio 16.9, and we want set the width to 100 and height to auto for background video. Then just copy this code and change the min to max. And width should be auto with the height of 100%. Now background display is much better. The at media rule should always be placed at the bottom of your CSS file below all other styles. This ensures that your responsive styles override the default styles without causing any conflicts or errors. So let's just push them down for now. Let's begin styling the navigation bar in the style.css file. Target the nav element and set its background to white. Use display flex to lay out the elements in a row. Apply justify content space between to position the Melati code logo on the left and the navigation links to the right. Then add padding of 0 20px. Additionally, use align items center to vertically align all items within the nav bar. Next, let's define some styles for the unordered list elements to enhance its layout. Set the display to flex and remove the default bullet points by setting list style to none, and use align items to center as each list item represents an individual navigation link. Set the height of the list item elements to 60px to ensure a consistent and balanced appearance. Keep in mind that the height of the list item elements collectively determines the height of their parent container, providing structure and alignment to the navigation bar. Displays flex and align items center. Great. Next, we will style the anchor tag elements within the navigation. Set the height to 80% to ensure consistent vertical alignment and use display flex combined with align items center to center the content within each link. Remove the default underline with text decoration none. Set the color to black and give it a padding of 10px, 30px, let's say 20. Additionally, implement a hover effect. When a user hovers over a link, change the background color to black and the text color to white, providing a dynamic transition. Let's back to our anchor tag and set the padding back to 30. I think it's better. Implement the border radius to 5px and transition effect for a simple smooth animation Set it to 0 0.2 second. Looks good. Let's move on. Now let's focus on creating the sidebar. To begin, return to your HTML file. The structure of the sidebar will be similar to the navigation bar, with the primary difference being its vertical orientation. Just copy the unordered list and paste it below. Give it a class name of sidebar. Let's style our sidebar. Set the position to fixed, top e zero, right equals zero, background color white, width of 250 pixels, height of 100 VH. Let's give it a box shadow. And actually, let's adjust the box shadow for our navigation bar as well.
back to the to the sidebar, set the display to flex, align items, flex start. Justify content, flex start. And change the flex direction to column. Now set the sidebar list items width to 100% and anchor tags width to 100% as well. The final design enhancement for our sidebar is to apply a glass effect. To achieve this, back to the sidebar and use the, the backdrop filter property. This property controls how the elements behind the sidebar are rendered. To see the magic of the blur effect, we have to make the background color more transparent. To adjust how much it should be blurred, you can change the number inside the parentheses. Now that the basic design is in place, let's work on the functionality of the menu buttons. We aim to create an interactive experience by allowing users to open the sidebar using a menu button and close it with an X icon. These icons are readily available and can be accessed easily and for free from various online icon libraries. For example, you can go to googlefonts.com slash icons and click on the menu and X icon and download the SVG file and move it to your project folder. Now back to the VS Code, open the menu file and copy the entire SVG. Go to the HTML file inside the unordered list of the nav bar. Below all other list items, let's paste the SVG. Okay, now we cannot see the menu icon because of the sidebar. Go to style.css and set the sidebar display to none. Nice. Now you can change the fill property in your SVG to display a black icon. Now let's give it a class name of menu icon. From style.css, target the menu icon, set the margin to 0 and 5 pixels, width to 30 pixels, height to 30 pixels, and cursor to pointer. It's now time to introduce JavaScript to add interactivity to our design. Using JavaScript, we will enable the menu icon to open the sidebar when the user clicks on it, enhancing the functionality and user experience. We want JavaScript to change the display property of our sidebar from None to Flex. For that, we should give our menu icon an on-click attribute that executes the show sidebar function when the user clicks on it. Now let's take this and, below all of our code inside the body, create a script element. In here, we define the function showSidebar. This function is going to grab the sidebar element and change its display property to flex. Store the sidebar in a constant side. Use document.querySelector. Type in sidebar. Now let's set side.style display to flex. That's it for our menu icon. Now, if we click the menu, the sidebar will appear. Now let's do the same thing for closing the sidebar. First, open the close file, copy the SVG, and back to the HTML file inside the sidebar unordered list. Above all list items, paste the SVG. Set the value of the fill attribute to black. Actually, you can change the height and width directly inside the SVG. Set a class name of close icon. In your CSS, change its margin to 15 pixels and 25 pixels. Cursor should be pointer. 
Now it's time to add JavaScript to make this work. Inside the close SVG element, set an onClick attribute that executes the function close sidebar. Grab this in the script tag below the other function. Add the close sidebar function. Just make sure to write it exactly the same way. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And then let's copy the code above and paste it here and just change the display flex to none. Now that we made the sidebar functionality work, we need to make our design responsive. I would like nav links to be hidden on devices with a screen width of less than 800 px. You can customize this as needed. In the CSS below the other media queries, create another media query. The media query will activate when the specified condition is met. Within this query, I'll define a class, hide on mobile. which will set the display property to none. Um, this ensures that any element with this class will be hidden on devices with a screen width smaller than 800 px, improving the user experience on smaller screens. I want all of our list items in nav to be hidden on devices that are smaller than 800 pixels. So let's go to our HTML file and add the class hide l to our list items that we want to hide. Now, if we set the width to less than 800 pixels, you can see the items have disappeared. But as you have noticed, our nav height has changed. We can avoid this by setting the min height of our nav to 50 pixels. Nice. Now our sidebar looks good for tablets. On mobiles, I want the sidebar to take the entire width. For that, we should create another media query for the max width of 400 pixels. In this case, our sidebar will get the width of 100%. Now it is what we wanted. Next, we need to hide the menu icon on bigger screens because we have all of the elements that we need on screens that are bigger than 800 pixels. There is no need for a menu icon. So grab the menu icon class name and in your CSS, set its display property to none. Then inside this media query, set its display to block. Now, on the screens bigger than 800 pixels, the menu icon will disappear. And that's it. We have a fully responsive navigation bar.